Hello stampers. I want to talk to you quite quickly um, before we get stuck into a card about the value in hosting a Stampin' Up! event. Um, so you might not know because we do lots of craft noons, but if you would like to have some of your friends come and craft with you um, at your place or your workplace or some other venue and you'd like me to come along and bring some fun projects for us, you can actually earn free Stampin' Up! products based on um, the total sales uh, made by yourself and your friends. Uh, so you can see here on the table on page 86 of the mini catalogue, it sets out the party sales required to get um, some Stampin' Rewards. So you can see that from an order of $250, you can have 10% um, reward spending money. So that's $25 and it goes up from there. So it quite adds up quite quickly by the time your friends get a couple of stamp sets um, or some new markers or some card stock, as you can see. What I really wanted to feature though, was that with the mini catalog comes some new hostess goodies that you can um, order. Now these are exclusive to hostesses. You can't order them. Um, unfortunately, if you love the caroling mice, you've got to earn it as a hostess freebie. I can't order it for you. Um, the same with this cute little paper up here. This is called Celebrate Everything. It's 12 by 12 papers. And that costs you $31 in hostess spending. So you need to, to be able to earn that, you need to um, have collected orders totaling $310. Down here, we've got this cute little set called Caroling Mice. So Caroling Mice is worth $22.50 in hostess credits. So this one's um, slightly cheaper. It's a full stamp set. You can see it's got these cute little Caroling Mice and a tree and some snowflakes and some stars, some music notes, the ground and a lamppost. So today, that's what we're actually going to be using as a demonstrator i actually could order it as a pre-order just one one little set um just so that i could show you guys how versatile it is and how much you need it in your collection so that's what we're going to use today we're going to use this cute little mouse here and we're going to use the lamp post and the tree we might use some others we'll see how we go we're also going to use a oops a garden green base some cardstock from the Santa Express papers. Um, so there's a red one that's got the scenery on the background or and the dots, which have got presents on the back. They're going to go that way. We're going to put a white scene panel here on the front. Okay, and that's where I'm going to do most of my stamping. But first of all, I would like to, I want to actually put a, a border edge on this red piece. So I've grabbed this die from the Scalloped Contours um, die set and my mini stamp and emboss machine. And I'm just going to run this through quickly. Now, little hint I like to do is I like to line up the edge of the scallops with the edge of the paper. That works quite well for me. And I'm just going to get a post-it note because this dies a little bit bent from going through the machine so many times just to hold it in place okay and through it goes okay You can see that cute little scalloped board is there. Okay. So I'm going to tape that. Or you can glue it if you prefer. Um, there we go. I knew I had it. So here's my tape. And I'm just going to put some, someone asked me recently how much tape they should put on their projects. It's really up to you. I like to put um, just some in the corners and if it's a long piece, some in the middle. Um, others, others like to um, do the whole lot. Personally, I think that 
you put too much tape on, it's very hard to peel it back up to reposition it. I've seen more than one crafter come to grief because they have tried to pull up their work because it's crooked and they've put so much tape on it that it's ripping paper left, right and centre. With this little bit, I could pull it up again if I wasn't happy with it. Um, there's only going to be small amount of tear, if any. Okay. And I can always lift it. I can always sort of go into the cracks and poke things in. I quite often do that. Or I can stick the nozzle of my glue in and glue it down if I need a little bit more security. All right. I'm going to pop that on the front of my card. Okay, and this is probably the easiest, the easiest bit, isn't it? Doing the base. All right. Now I picked garden green um, because I've got, the, we've got these fun dots um, that it sort of coins, sort of matches. Um, <laughs> let's go back. Okay. I'm actually changing the colour because now that I look at it under the proper light, I can actually see that it's shaded spruce, not garden green. So my apologies. I'll try and remember to put a little edit in the video when I edit it. A little note in a subtitle. All right, that's better, isn't it? You can see the difference. So this one matches the shaded spruce. I don't know what I was thinking. I don't know. I don't know. You know me. I don't know. All right, so here's the scene going to happen here. Don't forget that, you know, at this point, your card is still very versatile. You can um, play with positioning um, and make it however you like. Okay, so here's my little scene. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to stamp on what I would like in my background. So I'm not going to stamp my mouse because I want my little mouse to be really featured, really sort of um, really out the front, loud and proud. Okay, so there's my tree and my um, lamppost. The tree's up high because that's where I'm going to put my my mouse. You're not going to see that, he's, that it's really, really high. I mean, if it is, it would just be in the background and the lamppost in the foreground. You know, have a think about some of those artistic concepts. Um, it's really quite um, versatile. I'm going to grab my um, soft suede. And I'm going to put some of this, oh, this dirt around the base. So that, that's pretty cute. Okay, put that to the side. All right, I'm going to get a scrap piece and I'm going to um, stamp the mouse. Okay, and I'm also going to stamp my sentiment, which I'm actually going to take from Santa's delivery um, because the mice don't actually come with any um, sentiments. So here we go. Oops. Don't forget to check that you're going to have a nice even coverage. And I'm putting that in the middle because I'm actually going to die cut that out. Okay, I paused the video um, when I heard Kevin pull into the driveway. So I knew he'd want to say hello and, um, you know, catch up after he got home from work. So I took the opportunity to colour and fussy cut our little mouse um, to, to put on the front of the card. And also to... Um, die cut out the sentiment using one of the little scalloped rectangles from the um, sculpt contour set you know the same set that I, I used for the the border before so I'm just going to go ahead and quickly show you 
some of the coloring techniques. So I'm using the watercolor pencil. So you've noticed I've used these a few times this weekend. Um, I find that they're a really quick, versatile way to get um, a variety of color um, into my pictures. So I'm actually gonna use black last because I found it ran a little bit. All right, so I'm going to do the tree first. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go really lightly with this lighter green. So this is Granny Apple Green, and it's from the second watercolour set. So I'm just going really lightly right to the edges, because remembering that the water will spread it out and sort of smooth it out, and I shouldn't get too many lines or um, anything on the image. Okay, I'm actually, and I'm going to go back over the, with garden green, and I'm just going to give it some definition. And when that, when I use the water, it'll blend it together really nicely. So now I'm just going over the lines that the artist has already given us. Okay. Just very gently, just to give it some depth of colour. Um, okay, now I'm going to put a red ribbon around the uh, the bow. And you'll see that I'm pressing quite hard in the bits where I think that there'd be quite a darker colour because of shadow or the tie of the knot. And then I'm just going to go over the rest of it just so that there's enough colour to move around the image, the shape. Okay. Now here with my lantern, I'm going to give it um, that it's a light. It's very Charles Dickens, isn't it, to have lanterns. So I'm going to do the orange centre. And it's just sort of an impression that there's light. There's some sort of light source there. I'm not drawing in a candle. I'm not drawing in a light. It's just an impression. Okay, so I can see that my lamp post is a light and now I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a glow around it. And I'll smooth that out with the pencil, with the water, sorry. All right, with the black. Now, to me, I don't know why, but the, but the lanterns just have to be black. Don't know. I can't, I just can't do them any other colour, <laughs> which is ridiculous because like my grandma's got a white one. I know they're in other colours. I just, hmm, I just have to do black. Do whatever colour you want though. There's no right or wrong. Okay. Now I'm actually pressing quite hard with the black um, because I really want that colour to be quite um, dark. Okay. Now, now to come back with my water brush. Remembering my trick to um, test how much how wet the brush is on the back of my hand. Okay, and I can feel it's not too wet there. And now I can just smooth that color out. With the tree, I can probably leave a little bit of the color um, not smoothed out too much. It'll just give it that little bit of, um, of depth and shade, light and shade, I mean. Okay. Quite like that oh i forgot the trunk i don't need the trunk because it'll be under the mouse okay now i've just cleaned off my brush and i'm just going to do my lightest color first being very careful not to touch the black um watercolor pen Now I realised while I was had this paused while I was talk while when I was talking to Kevin that I've actually filmed this in the in portraits of landscape so I can't edit it for um, YouTube. So if you know anybody who'd like to see it, see the video, please direct them to our Facebook community group um, or my page, and they'll be able to access it from there. All right. All right, we are actually just about done. Now we're going to take down the seam. Okay. 
Oops. Okay, we're going to tape um, this down. Normally I would 3D, um, actually no, I might do that. I'm going to use um, dimensionals just to give it a little bit of height, but it means that my mouse also needs a little bit extra height um, because I wanted him above the sign. So what I've done is I've already put um, the dimensionals on the back. I'm just going to give them a second dimensional just so it's too high. Just be aware if you're going to post a card that it's going to be quite thick. Two dimensions deep is not going to go through for the regular postage price. You'll need two stamps on it. Okay. Now I pre-stamped and organized the inside. Ready to go. And of course the envelope. So if you have loved this card, let me know. The set is called Caroling Mice. You can only earn it um, as a hostess. So gather some friends together. Let's get together or collect some orders amongst your crafty friends. Um, and let me know that this is what you're aiming for and we'll see what we can organize. Join me for the next video very, very soon. Bye.